Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Ευχαριστώ. Hey guys and girls, it's Tom Panos here coming to you live from uh, Greece. I'm just going to wait for this audience to, uh, to build up and uh, making sure we've got good connection. So here come the audience now. Hi gang. Okay, let's get this audience. Mm. A Greek frappe. Hello, John Manus, how are you? Guys and girls, can I just get a okay from you that you can hear the sound? Uh, Emil, it's now one o'clock in the afternoon. Hello, Paul. Beers start around six o'clock, seven o'clock. Just wait for this audience to build up. Hello, Courtney, good to see you. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Billy Pap. So, gang. I just, uh, can I just get a loud and clear? Can everyone hear me loud and clear? Beautiful. So gang, hello Tane. Good to see you Tane. I followed your advice. Tane told me to put the hat on. Hey Nick Riggers, how you going? By the way guys and girls, where I'm at is a place called Pilos. That is the backdrop of the hotel that I'm staying at. And um, the plan is that I'm just gonna finish this rant and then I'm heading down to uh, to the beach. Um, I'm just going to swing this around. There we go. Have a look at that there. Right. So what's the plan today? Plan is to uh, to go down and have a swim and uh, have uh, some uh, sublaka and hang out and have uh, um, a couple of beers and then uh, go out to visit my cousins, which are about 20 minutes away. Um, Thank you to all the uh, birthday wishes from everyone. I appreciate that. Uh, happy, uh, happy to actually have a birthday. To be honest with you, after the uh, the bumpy road I've had uh, since my early 30s uh, with uh, with a big C, but uh, it's just so good. It is so good to be on your 52nd birthday and be uh, totally cancer clear. Not a single cell of cancer in your body. It has been a bumpy road. It has been what the saying says, difficult roads lead to beautiful destinations. And it has been the case. One of the lessons I'm gonna to talk to you about today is that um, 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 not all storms come to distract your life. Some of the storms that come into your life are there to clear the way. I'm gonna repeat that. Some of the storms you have are there to clear the way. And what I thought I'd do is on this, you know, Sunday night rant is just go through with you nine light, not, I was thinking about it. So I sat down this morning and I was getting my first one of these and I started writing out, you know, like in the 52 years, what are nine life lessons I've learned? Like I've learned 150, maybe 500 lessons. Who knows if you sat down and wrote down everything, hey, Georgie Soros, but there's a nine, nine life lessons that I'd love to share with you today. So let's move straight into this. Lesson number one, lesson number one, lesson number one is this, never blame anyone in life. Good people give you happiness. The worst people give you a lesson. I'll repeat that again. Never blame anyone in life. Good people give you happiness. They also give you memories. The worst people give you a lesson, right? So guys and girls, that's lesson number one. Don't ever, ever, you know, feel, you know, pissed off about a situation and put out the blame game because there, some, there, there, there's a gift in every interaction and every person you meet. Thank you, Fleur. Thank you all for um, your kind messages on Facebook Messenger as well because I know like, I don't get back to a lot of those. Um, lesson number two, lesson number two, lesson number two. Let's look at lesson number two. And this is a lesson that um, I wish I'd known in um, when I was 16 or 17. And that is, um, do what's right, not what's easy. Do what's right, not what's easy. And the reason why, when you do what's right, the rewards are tenfold, but they're not them. There's this delayed gap, there's a pause. 
between you know doing the right thing and the benefits of the right thing you know whereas if you take the other way and the other way is that you do the easy thing what actually happens is the reward is faster but it's much smaller thank you glenn much appreciated so understand that do what's right not what's easy so every time you're faced with a situation and you're thinking hey billy thank you for that message as well you're thinking to yourself you know like you've got this intuition you've got this inclination you've got this feeling inside you that hey I feel like, you know, this is the right thing to do, but I'm not prepared to pay the price. Thanks, Arabella. My advice to you is to always do the right thing, not the easy thing, because you will have benefits that will far be better than the benefit of the short-term feel-good thing. Move on to number three. Number three is an interesting one, because three years ago, and I'm not going to name names, but I had a number of people, including people that, you know, do the sort of business that I'm in, in training and development. And I had a few clients say, Tom, I'm really worried about you. I'm worried about the language you're using and I'm worried, you know, how you sort of carry on. And I want you to understand this is a mantra I'd love you to nail. When someone says that to you, my response is, don't worry about what I'm doing. Worry about why you're worried about what I'm doing. I'll repeat that again. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Worry about why you're worried about what I'm doing. And I have to tell you, I chose a strategy to be the same person offline, online, same person on Facebook, but I am not on Facebook. Same person that I am with my friends as I am with a client. I will treat the street cleaner and the COO, CEO of a big ASX listed company the same way. And I've got to tell you, that strategy has served me right. Because if you go out and look at Facebook analytics, when you search of all the people in the world in real estate coaching and training that curate content or create content, I am number three in the world. Gary Vaynerchuk one, Tom Ferry two, Tom Panos three. And I'm pumped about that because I come from a country in Australia that's got 25 million people, right? 25 million people, not, you know, what the USA has. I don't have a videographer following me around. I don't have the resources and I don't go off and actually invest a hell of a lot of money in my own media platforms. But to be number three in the world on the topic of real estate content and creation and a lot of it part of it's got to do with you guys with your engagement on a Sunday night rant part of it has been that so uh, let me repeat that again you know when someone comes up to you and they say don't worry about what I'm doing uh, sorry you know when they say I'm worried about you I'm re yeah, I'm really worried about you, but you can actually feel that sort of that they don't really mean it. Nail this response. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Worry about why you're worried about what I'm doing. And the comment came from someone that thought that some of the language that I'd use on social media was going to destroy my career life it's actually been the opposite and I think there's absolute evidence right now in the world that what people are dying for is not someone that's politically correct and morally screwed what they're looking for is someone whose audio matches their video someone who's the same person offline online I think deep down what human beings are looking for in a world of milkshake ducks and milkshake ducks is people that are trying to create a different life on social media than their real life I'm telling you at the end of the day the data doesn't bullshit and I'm pumped about it number four rule number four guys and girls chill the fuck out no one gets out alive think about what I just said chill the fuck out no one gets out alive in this game man i have to tell you life humbles you 
And as you, you know, on my 52nd birthday, I'm thinking to myself, so many things I'd be pissed off about that occupied and I participated in bullshit, concerned about things. Chill, man. I'm telling you straight. It's temporary. Which brings me to my next rule. I think it's really important that you just got to remember that everything's temporary. That shit feeling of losing business, it's temporary. That hiccup is temporary. Man, everything is just moving. Nothing is permanent. Hello, Bernard. Hello to everyone who has said hi. Sometimes I miss people saying comments, so please don't personalize it. I'm just trying to concentrate on giving you content. But man, I'm telling you straight, don't get too caught up in anything because everything is temporary. And one of the best questions you can ask to reframe how you feel is when you're in a shit spot, when something shit's going on, when the shit's hit the fan, ask yourself, is this going to be a problem in a month? Is this going to be a problem in 30 days? Is this going to be a problem in a year? You know, and I think that helps you take away the small stuff that you worry about. Let's move on to the next lesson. The next lesson is this, and understand this. And I talked about it at the start. Not all storms have come to disrupt your life. Some storms have come to clear the path. And the reason they come to come and clear the path is this. You see, when something shit really happens, guys and girls, you've got to understand that the person that goes into the storm and the person that comes out of the storm is a different person. That is the point of the storm. The second thing I'd say is this. Understand this clearly. That a lot of the times, and by the way, just on the issue of storms, understand that they do end. I mean, it just doesn't storm forever. Storms do end. So I think you've, that's, that's another point that links back to the previous lesson, which is everything's temporary because the storm is in fact temporary. So nail that into your head. Let's move on. Rule number seven, avoid toxic people. Avoid toxic people. Why? Because this is what toxic people do. They create chaos. They point fingers. They shift blame. They avoid responsibility. They're like this virus that moves their bad mood and negativity to you without you realizing it. So guys and girls, unlike a virus like a flu, which you actually can feel the side effects, like a sore throat, you know, congestion, I'm telling you straight, the problem with a mind virus is it happens so seamless that you begin to realize, shit, coming some product and average of all the people I interact by face-to-face -face phone and text message I'm telling you if you hang around with four dickheads you become the fifth R remove toxicity in your life and I'm going to tell you the signs of toxic people are the following they're chaos and drama addicted they're always pointing fingers and they're always shifting the blame let's move on to the next lesson and that is, everyone has two eyes, but no one has the same view. I'll repeat it. Everyone has two eyes, but no one has the same view. And the reason I share this is that if you look at life like a beach ball, and you know, ironically, that I'm sitting behind a, a beach that I'm going to jump into in around 10, uh, 10 or 15 minutes. I want you to understand that like a beach ball that's got different colored panels, red, white, green, blue, you could both be looking at a beach ball, but one person's looking at the green panel and another person is looking at a, at a red panel and you're both obsessed that you're sure and you're 150% conviction that your ball is green. Oh, this is nice. Mm. But man, I have to get you to get super clear that the way that you see the world and the way that other people see the world is different. So one of the strategies I'm going to share with you is to sit from a position of curiosity when you're talking to someone, not from a position of judgment. I'll repeat 
that again. Whenever you're interacting with someone, sit from a position of curiosity, not a position of judgment, and sit there and try and really get into why are they saying this? How are they feeling about what they're saying? What is the energy I'm feeling out of this interaction? Could they be right and I'm wrong? Which is going to bring me to my last point, guys and girls. And please do us a favor. I think this has been an extremely useful rant. It's lessons that, you know, on the 52nd birthday, I wish someone had actually wrote this letter to me and gave it to me on my 21st. So send it out to someone on their 21st. And that is this one. Get smart. Stop arguing with people and let them be wrong. I'll say that again. Stop arguing with people, let them be wrong and move on. Don't participate in that as life is temporary, guys and girls, and the most crucial thing you've got in your life is time. It's a non-renewable resource. I'm so pumped to be able to be alive and sharing this rant with you on my 52nd birthday. And I um, just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart because to be able to have achieved the impact that I wanted would have been very difficult without this new world of social media and Facebook has been instrumental in helping me achieve my legacy which is at the moment to help reduce suffering and pain that p people may be you know be having that are real estate agents life has sort of put me in a path of real estate and my job is not sit there only just telling people on scripts and dialogues and templates and things that are going to improve their income but from the bottom of my heart I really want you to do is to improve your whole life because I'm going to tell you straight you didn't get into business guys and girls to be dead at 60 divorced at 60 estranged for your kids at 60 fat at 60 broke at 60 just because you had a few plaques put on your wall because you won a few awards throughout your life guys and girls what's the plan to build a magnificent life signing off speak soon press that share button it's been one of the strategies that has helped me get the amplification of the Tom Panos message. With love, God bless you.